Good morning to you. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. This will be really quick today because I've got to go catch a flight and get back to North Carolina after dealing with Amelda. The overproducing and incredible rainfall rates of Amelda, people will not forget that for a long time, ranking up there with Allison and Harvey for portions of Texas that it affected uh, in the last few days. So I am in Dallas getting ready to fly home in the next little while. So let's take a look first at what's happening in the tropics. Obviously, a lot going on. First, in the Central Pacific, you see Kiko over here. It will not be able to make it to Hawaii and cause any problems there. So that's great news. In the Eastern Pacific, we have Lorena here, which is practically over the Baja, the Southern Baja. And you see the next several days, it's forecast to turn west and bring hurricane conditions, very rough weather, flooding rain, all of it. Everything on the menu that a hurricane can bring, uh, Lorena is going to do that down here. That thin red line, let's thicken that up a little bit. Uh, for the southern Baja, and then move north and northwest, north-northwest along and parallel to the coast, maybe bringing some additional moisture to the desert southwest and northwest Mexico, but... It doesn't look like it'll be in very copious amounts. In the Atlantic Basin, we have a couple of systems to watch. One here south of Haiti, which very low chance of development. But maybe it'll bring some rainfall uh, to Jamaica. Maybe. Uh, I know you guys need it down there. And then, of course, we have another tropical wave out here to the south and east of the islands. And this one actually has a chance to develop some and may bring rather heavy rain and squally conditions to the Windward Islands. And then we have another tropical wave way out here, uh, still on the coast of Africa, that the models are very enthusiastic about developing as it comes off. So this will probably be our fifth hurricane. I think we've had four already, if memory serves. Uh, and it's the tropics are ready to go, that's for sure. Then, of course, we have Jerry. And this will not directly impact the Northeast Caribbean Sea down here. There are no watches and warnings for the U.S., British Virgin Islands, or Puerto Rico. I think this turns uh, soon enough and gains enough latitude to keep most of the heavy weather away. There will be some swells that move in over the next few days as this turns the corner. But then Bermuda, right there, right in the line of fire from Jerry, and it looks like from the modeling that Jerry will become stronger, as they seem to do, once they reach the subtropics up here and find more favorable conditions. So I'm going to be looking very seriously at going to Bermuda and covering this hurricane. We'll see. If I do, I would need to leave on Monday. So more about that in the coming days. But as this turns the corner, yes, there will be some swells that impact the Caribbean or Caribbean, whichever one you want to call it. And then also those swells will emanate out and eventually make it over to the coast over here, providing surfers with more wave energy to take advantage of. Just be careful as you do that. Satellite look from the uh, Tropical Tidbit site. There's Jerry. Here's another disturbance. And I think this is going to try to develop some and bring rather nasty conditions to Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, the Grenadine, St. Vincent, uh, maybe as far north as Dominica. We'll see. I'll keep an eye on this, and we'll talk about it more um, later this afternoon or evening. I'll probably do another video discussion. And then in the Pacific, there's Lorena, and then our other features out here that won't be impacting land. All right, looking at the modeling here, just one real quick, the GFS from the 6Z run this morning. So this is not too old, valid 6Z, that means it was initialized at 2 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is the 5,000-foot level of the atmosphere, the vorticity. There's the signature for Jerry. This is the remnants of Umberto up here. Still some energy uh, left over from Imelda, believe it or not. It better not mess up my flight out of Dallas. I couldn't fly out of Houston yesterday. I was supposed to. Ugh. I mean, my troubles, I mean, come on. That's nothing compared to what people are going through. So just forget I said anything. I would like to be able to fly home, but if I can't, it's part of the gig. It's the way it goes. So let's put this into motion uh, frame by frame. 
You see Jerry moving north of the islands, right down here, uh, comfortably far away. But then uh, keep your eyes on this feature coming in to the corner here, uh, Trinidad, Tobago, there's Barbados. I'll leave those up as we go through these arrow keys. Moving forward in time, right there you see a couple of frames that the system tries to close off there just south and east um, of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and all of this coloring in here, these splotches, indicates just more energy, more vorticity, and a more vigorous look to this tropical wave. And you can see the bending of the wind flags in here. So, you know, sharp trough axis, tropical wave, whatever you want to call it. It's energy, and it's going to bring some heavy rain and gusty winds to the islands down there. So be ready for that. I'll talk about that more uh, for sure. I know I have a lot of people that follow my work down there. And giving you a heads up, here it comes. Good for the fresh water. Not so good for other impacts. And then we see Jerry uh, up here not looking as organized. That looks very weak in the modeling, which is great news. We'll have to see. But uh, this is 78 hours out. But watch what happens. It finally starts to ramp up again. Not the best looking in the model field. There's a little piece of energy that breaks off. Uh, the GFS keeps it southeast of Bermuda. We'll see. I, I have my suspicions that it'll be stronger. Not ready to, to say how strong I think it'll get, uh, but the GFS moves it. See, look how it gets stronger there. You know, so it could do that before it gets to Bermuda. This is uh, about a week away. So we'll see. There's still a little bit of time for some strange things to happen up through here where it may turn north and stall. It might try to come back west, but more than likely it would just slow down and then continue on out to sea. And there is more activity coming. I'll just show you a little farther out in time. See, long range, way out, 200 plus hours. And you see there's no threats over here, but another hurricane probably coming into the picture. The one that is currently over Africa now, that one is reflected in the five-day outlook right there. Let's see if we can get this to click. There we go. So lots to watch. The MJO going to be very, very favorable in the Atlantic, uh, in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico over the next several weeks. So we have all this Atlantic activity. Most of it should curve away from most land masses, Bermuda notwithstanding. And then we see as things naturally shift towards the western Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf, those could become busier later in the month. I mean, we only have 10 days left. And then into early to mid-October. And you remember last year and the year before and the year before, and the year before that with Joaquin, going back to 2015, our Octobers seem to be busier and busier. And on that note, I'll say goodbye for now. i got to get ready to go to DFW. I am Mark Stout of HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you with another update later this evening.